Hello everyone, my name is Samuel Constant from Epitelix and I'm very proud and glad to present you today uh, in vitro cell model of the human airway epithelium and how uh, they could be used in the context of toxicity assessment. First of all, in the first part of this talk, I'd like to cover the currently available in vitro cell models that we have developed at Epitelix. So at Epitelix, we are tissue engineers and we were really focused on modeling uh, human airway epithelium and more particularly the, no the nasal epithelium, tracheal and bronchial epithelium, which are known as a product which is called mucilair. And more recently, uh, we were also interested in, uh, in development and also uh, standardizations of uh, small airway epithelium with a product which is called a smaller system, which I'm going to present to you in a minute. First of all, how do we make the uh, mucilar system, which is an upper respiratory tract epithelium? Well, we start with uh, uh, let's say biopsies or cells uh, collected from the nasal cavity, the trachea or the bronchi. We isolate these cells and seed them into microprose filter, transfer system. Then we switch the cells to the air liquid interface and they progressively differentiate into an epithelium. So this process takes 45 days in our facilities and we ship these tissues ready to use. The beauty of this system is that the, the tissue preserves its characteristic and function up to one year in culture in your incubator. So the uh, upper respiratory tract epithelium, namely the, the mucilar system, is, is made of three types of cells. The basal cells, which are the progenitor cells, elongated ciliated cells, and also goblet cells which secrete mucus. The epithelium is pseudostratified, meaning that all the cells touch the laminar basis. We can produce standardized versions of this uh, mucilar system from single donor or pool of donors. Based on this system, uh, we have also developed, uh, um, let's say, uh, co-culture models with the fibroblasts, uh, and this is called the mucilar HF uh, versions. And we can gain benefit from uh, let's say the, the genetic backgrounds uh, of, and the pathology of the, of the patients to uh, produce normal versions, but also asthmatic versions, COPD versions, cystic fibrosis versions, and allergic rhinitis versions. So some words about the characterizations of, uh, of the models. Uh, first, uh, uh, the epithelia is fully ciliated. So as you could see here on this uh, beautiful electron microscopy pictures, um, uh, there are cilia really uh, everywhere uh, on, the, on, the mucilar, on the surface of the, of the mucilar. But maybe most importantly, the cilia are functional. In this assay, we had have added uh, um, polystyrene microbeads, and uh, they are moving, uh, they are trapped into the cilia, into the mucus, and they are moving uh, thanks to the uh, impulsion of the, of the cilia beating. Very interestingly, uh, you can uh, uh, record this movement and uh, extract quantit quantitative information. As you could see here, uh, we can track each particle. They are labeled with a specific color here. And uh, you can extract a distance versus time, meaning a particle velocity. And then you can average the velocity of uh, a large number of uh, particles at the same time, uh, giving you uh, a, a measurement of mucociliary clearance being here around 30 microns per second. So what I've shown you here uh, were uh, data from normal donor. But this situation uh, could be uh, quite different in uh, some pathological context. Let's take the extreme cases. The extreme cases would be cystic fibrosis. Indeed, in this pathology, the mucus is so thick that uh, finally uh, the um, particles could not move. However, you could see vibrations below in, in the periciliary liquid fluids, and the, the highly viscous gels uh, could not move, being so viscous here. And if you do the same type of analysis, quantitative analysis as I shown previously, uh, you will end up with a particle velocity which is really quasi zero. And this is uh, what you can observe uh, uh, in vivo, unfortunately, uh, with cystic fibrosis uh, patients. So you have this normal value, and something in between would be uh, uh, very severe COPD cases, as you could see here. 
And you could see the, uh, how powerful this, this method could be uh, uh, in terms of uh, extractive uh, um, information. If you want to re restore uh, this mucosal clearance, you can uh, very easily uh, make it uh, uh, say, uh, a standard assay. So what are the main characteristics of the mucider? First, uh, uh, the longevity. It has a shelf life of one year which is very important, especially if you want to study uh, um, repeated dose effects uh, of, uh, of, of a challenge. Uh, it mimics the morphology and function of the normal airway epithelium, active ion transport, metabolic activity. Around more than 100 uh, publications are, are already uh, uh, published on this, on, on, on this topic using, using musical systems. Epithelia from several different pathologies are available. Asthma, COPD, cystic fibrosis, variations, electrogenitis, easy to handle and maintain, serum free, and worldwide shipping, meaning that uh, we produce these tissues in our laboratory in France or in, in Switzerland, and they are shipping in US, uh, Europe, and Asia. New um, models that we have developed uh, two years ago, which is uh, uh, a small airway epithelial model, uh, which is also made on primary human cells, uh, are isolated from the bronchial regions. The, 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 the principle of the reconstitution is, is the same. There is an, an isolation, amplification, and seeding state, and then uh, switching again to the adipin interface, and they form um, uh, a, a senior epithelium that, that we have uh, seen previously with the upper respiratory tract. But basically, more importantly, here in vivo, there is a switch into the populations of the cells with uh, uh, um, fewer goblet cells in these regions than in the upper respiratory tract. And a new type of cells which appear, uh, which are club cells, formerly known as Clara cells. So if we compare uh, the two models from the same donor, for example, uh, a bronchial epithelium versus a small airway epithelium, so the mucilar versus the small air. What you can immediately uh, observe, uh, being, uh, it's a cross section with the HNE uh, ensemble staining, uh, that uh, the epithelium is thinner as expected uh, in the in the smaller regions. Uh, uh, furthermore, um, um, as you could see here, the length of the cilia uh, is uh, uh, shorter, and there are fewer cilia in this in this model. Moreover, uh, um, uh, also as expected, uh, there is a high proportions of uh, of goblet cells. If you do, uh, for example, um, a staining with mix 5 ac you have a large proportions of mix 5 ac positive cells uh, uh, in this uh, in the bronchial regions, while you have uh, very few um, goblet cells uh, in the smaller regions. And the reverse is true for the club cells. With using CC10 as marker, um, this, you have a large proportion of, uh, of uh, positive signals uh, uh, in the small area region and uh, uh, a few uh, in the bronchial region. So, so this uh, data uh, really uh, pr prove that these two models are, are, are really quite different. So. Let's talk about uh, the, the, the utility uh, uh, and uh, how uh, micellar and smaller are, are, are used today. So there are a, a panel of functional in vitro assay using using this uh, this type of LP interface culture. First, they are used as a protocol for toxicity testing, for research on asthma, for research on COPD, cystic fibrosis, mucolytic activity, viral infection studies, bacterial infection studies, inhalation drug delivery, and anti-inflammatory agents. In terms of exposure, uh, uh, there are several uh, strategies to use these LI models. Either you can uh, add uh, your xenobiotics or uh, uh, let's say a new uh, API uh, as, as a liquid uh, or in solutions, for example, either apically to mimic uh, airborne exposure or basolaterally to mimic systemic exposure. Uh, you can apply uh, uh, your compound using uh, directly as a solid, but also uh, uh, there are several commercially available dynamic exposure systems uh, for to expose, for example, gas or smoke or nebulization with nebulizing chambers uh, that are uh, today uh, commercially available and where the mucilage and the smaller could, could fit into. 
I will more emphasize about how uh, the evaluations of inhalation toxicity uh, uh, of, of, of compounds uh, in, in general uh, and um, this xenobiotics which you breathe. Uh, we have a, a panel of, uh, of uh, let's say, uh, endpoints which could be uh, uh, very useful uh, for this toxicity, inhalation toxicity assessment. Well, uh, uh, airline models could be used to evaluate local tolerance the barrier functions, carcinogenicity, induction of disease such as fibrosis, hyperplasia, detection of inflammations, and uh, also potentially sensitizations. Uh, I will just first um, evaluate, uh, uh, focus on the evaluations of uh, uh, local tolerance. So, um, uh, LI model. As a multilayer smaller, uh, 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 I use to test uh, either liquid solid nanoparticles, gas, or smoke. And uh, uh, we developed a multiple endpoint testing strategy, uh, not only to monitor acute, but also chronic and long term effects of uh, these molecules or mixtures. Uh, we monitor a, a panel of, uh, of endpoints uh, to assess either the tissue integrity, measuring transepithelial reticular resistance, cell viability, monitoring the LDH release. Um, but also uh, um, the, the resurgent test, uh, effect on cilia, uh, monitoring, for example, the cilia beating frequency, uh, morphological uh, modifications, uh, let's say also secretions, modulation of secretions of mucins, but also uh, secretions of soluble factors such as cytokines, chemokines, and metalloproteinase. And none of these endpoints are destructive, meaning that uh, you could uh, apply uh, this strategy uh, with repeated challenge and monitor all these endpoints uh, uh, after each, each exposure. This is an example uh, of repeated dose toxicity. Uh, this is an, a 90 day study of repeated dose of formaldehyde. Uh, and the endpoint, which is uh, represented here, is transepithelial electrical resistance. Uh, and we monitor uh, the uh, impact of formaldehyde after each exposure. Uh, so uh, this is a six hour uh, exposure per day to formaldehyde for a period of, of 90 days. And uh, the idea is here is to find a, a non-observed adverse effect level for this endpoint, which is here at this dose. Obviously, this has to be also, uh, uh, let's say, uh, you know, uh, sought in the context of all the other endpoints uh, that I have presented before. Respiratory tract toxicity represents a significant cause of attrition uh, in inhaled drug candidate targeting respiratory diseases. Uh, so here, um, the relevance and value of uh, the mucilaire were explore, uh, explored by um, uh, repeated administrations of a set of compounds uh, with or without respiratory uh, toxicity following inhalation uh, in vivo. So uh, what is interesting in this in this paper uh, is that the data shows that the in vivo toxicity can be predicted in vitro by studying cell barrier integrity using tear and cell viability determined by resazurin methods. And uh, 15, 15 compounds were, were tested here, uh, which is a small set, but the results are really promising since both results had 88% of uh, sensitivity and 100% uh, specificity. Uh, notably, this effect occurs only at very high doses, at concentration levels significantly above or, uh, primary target cells potency, which suggests that um, uh, greater attrition to, to, to high local lung concentration should be taken into account in uh, safety assessment of uh, inert drugs. We now focus on evaluation of uh, barrier functions. And uh, it's uh, important to, 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 to note that uh, uh, um, air liquid interface model uh, could be a powerful tool to, to determine the amount of uh, xenobiotics which are trapped uh, by mucus, but also to determine uh, trans, uh, transepithelial permeability of compound, to quantify epithelial uptake, and to give input parameter for PBTK modeling.
So this is an example of data which uh, for a collaboration of three groups, uh, namely uh, uh, EGVAM is a group of Sandra Coquet uh, and the uh, laboratory uh, of uh, in, in Geneva and Epitelix. Uh, and uh, as you could see here, we reported here a vulnerability constant of reference compound uh, uh, on, on Mucilar. And uh, we tested around 40, 40 different uh, compounds in different chemical classes. And and uh, uh, the idea is to be able to rank here the relative permeability. And here you have highly permeable compound, moderately permeable compound, and very lowly permeable compound. So uh, in, in terms of decision making, uh, uh, if uh, your compound, for example, uh, uh, has a uh, no uh, effect on local tolerance and if uh, in complement uh, the compounds uh, has really low permeability you can see that the risk uh, uh, for inhalations uh, let's say toxicity afterwards for systemic risk is, is really low evaluation of mucosal inflammations uh, Human airway epithelial models are, are, are it's a very powerful in this way. Uh, it's you know, there are a lot of evidence in, in the literature that uh, uh, the uh, airway epithelium is not only a physical barrier, it's also a highly potent immunoregulator. And many uh, cytokines are, uh, are stimulated, uh, uh, are present and stimulated in these models and could be very easily detected. And uh, the, the one which are the most, uh, uh, let's say, um, um, studied are IL-8 and IL-6, for example. Uh, so I will, I will present to you uh, one case study on a formulation, for example, here. Uh, this is an example of a repeated dose exposure studies. Uh, this uh, was uh, tested for a period of 20 days and two doses per day uh, were uh, 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 it's a challenge. Okay. So as you could see the, here, we monitor the high L8, and this is the number of days. This is a control and the product which was tested. So uh, the first four days, there was no change between the control and uh, the, the, the formulation. However, at day five, uh, there was an increase of high L8 secretion. So here we stop uh, the dosing. And uh, what we could observe is that there was a decrease uh, and this inflammation was uh, uh, reversible. So uh, the epithelia was able to recover. However, uh, if we continue to, to add the, uh, the, the, the compound twice per day and stop at this day 12, uh, then unfortunately, uh, we were not in a scenario that uh, uh, um, that was no more reversible. We were, we were in an irreversible case and there was no more recovery at this stage. Then we continued and there was a very severe inflammation followed by, by a decrease which was correlated by cell death. So uh, it showed the value of this kind of, um, of uh, monitoring that uh, uh, local pro-inflammation could be detected. And uh, um, in this case scenario, we were able to detect the product which was responsible of this, uh, of this uh, um, particular, uh, um, let's say, um, uh, behavior. And uh, maybe more importantly, uh, if your decision was made uh, on that based on acute testing, you would say that uh, the, the, the compound is safe. However, this is uh, really not the case here. Uh, as uh, you could see, this, uh, this is progressive increase of, uh, uh, let's say, respiratory uh, uh, inflammation so on, the, on, the, on the respiratory mucosa. So as conclusion, uh, uh, LI3D human AI models such as the Mucilar and the smaller are useful tool to evaluate the effect of uh, inhaled xenobiotics, especially on local toxicity, respiratory absorptions, mucociliary clearance, mucosal inflammations. But today, there is a need to define an integrated testing strategy for uh, in vitro inhalation testing of xenobiotics based on efficiency of each cellular model on assay. Assess needs also to be developed on emergence model and models. Um, more physiologically relevant models are needed for the alveolar regions. So I uh, warmly thank uh, uh, all my collaborators uh, from uh, French lab and Swiss lab. I would like to thank you for your attentions and uh, you will see in a couple uh, uh, of slides as a reference from these talks.
This is the first slide from the reference. Second slide for the reference. Last slide for the reference. This is it. Very happy. Thank you very much for your attention.